This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. Week five might have been a kind of a weird one, but we get to close things out by watching Patrick Mahomes play football for tonight. And what better way could we possibly have to finish things out? It is the Raiders at the Chiefs Monday night football. We're going to break things down from a betting perspective and let you know what we're seeing in tonight's game between the Raiders and the Chiefs. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and numberfire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for numberfire.com. Joined here as I am each Monday by Ryan Williams. Check him out on Twitter at Ryan Alexander underscore W. Ryan, it is Raiders at Chiefs going on tonight. How you doing? I'm doing well, Jim. I'm doing well. It's it's a Monday. I'm I'm in new digs today. Um, so I'm hoping that the new digs bring, you know, some good juju along with us. And, and no pun intended with juju being uh, on this right. card as well. Uh, but no, it's 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 a fun one. I think we have a a great matchup ahead of us. I'm hoping for fireworks, lots of scoring. Um, and we could use that after this, some success that we had last night in Sunday night football. It was a good night betting all around uh, for Sunday. It was a good night in DFS on Sunday. And mm-hmm. we're just carrying that over in week five as we start a new quarter here of the football season. So I'm ready to get after it, Jim. I feel so lucky to get to Chris in your new apartment. This is a very exciting for me. Yeah, it, it, it should be. Um, maybe I'll give you the virtual tour after yeah. we get through the card. Um, we'll do that. We'll do that offline. I don't think people want to see the the chaos that's going on around here thus far. But you, you might know. be surprised, man. I don't know. YouTube can be a, a strange place, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah, to, you know, fair. and I, I get it. I get it. People are curious about people's lives. I understand for sure. But uh, congratulations on the new place. Congratulations on getting mostly moved in. And um, I my condolences as you spend the next week unpacking. That does not sound fun to me. Oh, it's going to be awful. It's going to be awful. <laughs> so uh, I need, so I need this. I need, I need a football Monday uh, to kind of bring us back to, you know, bring us back, bring me back to the fold and uh, help me to help keep my mind off of the craziness. Well, we'll try to keep Ryan sane by breaking down Raiders at Chiefs here in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you are subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. We are here every weekday, Monday through fi- Friday, talking NFL. We'll also now we'll be playoff talk with Pitching Ninja on tomorrow as well. I'll get my first look at week number six then. I get to bet against the Cardinals this week, which I am thrilled to finally get to do. So we'll talk about that on tomorrow's show. Also, these podcasts do go up to the fine people over on the FanDuel YouTube page. So check out the FanDuel YouTube page and covering the spread wherever you get your podcasts and make sure you are subscribed. Twisted T and FanDuel have joined forces to bring you a one-of-a-kind contest series that gives you a chance to compete for your share of thousands of dollars in site credit. Introducing Twisted T's College Football Picks, a sports betting-focused contest series that's entirely free to play. The contest is simple. Each college football game will be assigned a money line spread and total market with assigned points to each market. All you have to do is make six selections based on those three markets and earn points for each correct selection you made. At the end of the day, your score ranks among the best in the contest. You'll be eligible for your share of site credit. Head to FanDuel.com slash Twisted picks and make your picks. And remember, please drink responsibly. Let's take a look here at the Raiders at the Chiefs right now. The Chiefs seven and a half point favorites total is 51 and a half. Before we talk about those though, Ryan, I want to get your overall impression of this game. How are you feeling entering this one between the Raiders and the Chiefs? Yeah, I'm, fe- I'm feeling like, you know, this is a similar to what we experienced yesterday with the Bills, right? Like people were kind of just like, oh, you know, the, the, was the offense reeling? It took them, you know, the fourth quarter to come back against the Baltimore defense that struggled only put up 23 points and then they come out against the Steelers at home and just kind of show what they're about and I mean I think that the Chiefs can do that here in this matchup the Chiefs have in the Patrick Mahomes era have been incredible against this team this has been like the perfect spot for them to kind of circle on the calendar and be like hey if our offense is reeling at any point in time this is a get right spot for us. They have a seven and one record against the Raiders under Mahomes uh, versus this team. The only win that the Raiders had was in 2020. And we know that 2020 was a weird year with the pandemic. Um, other than that, they have absolutely blown out this team um, in, in most of the matchups. So I really like, I really like the Kansas city side of things and, and we'll talk about that. But I think overall in general, 
I think that the over is, is just screaming at me. I mean, 51 and a half in this total will not move, Jim. I, I don't get it. I mean, the Raiders are going to be in position. We know who the Raiders are. Like, you know, they're they're we're going to talk about Josh Jacobs. They're trying to establish him a little bit more. But this team is going to have to be forced to pass. I mean, the Chiefs are if the Chiefs bring it tonight, like they always do against this team, they have no reason but to try and go through the air and put up points. And this is a defense on the Kansas City side where they're kind of bend don't break. I feel like they'll give up production, you know, and yardage to these to these opponents. But when they get in the red zone, is is where it comes to fruition. So if the if the Raiders can get something going here and you know get to their if they get to their team total there's no way that this game doesn't go over I feel like but even then if they can just get you know 10 14 points I think the Chiefs can help carry the over just by themselves so that's kind of where I'm looking at I I really just like the Chiefs in this matchup and it's hard for me to kind of see the Raiders putting anything together on the road albeit um talking about this matchup um tonight for Monday Night Football yeah, when I was looking at this Raiders team in the offseason, I was somewhat like, I don't know. I think that there was cause to potentially think the defense might improve because they were awful last year, specifically right. against the past. Like their their rush defense is pretty good, but despite the fact they had g- good personnel for rushing the passer, they just couldn't do anything against the pass. And right. they bring in Patrick Graham to be the defensive coordinator. I have a pretty high opinion of him as a DC. And so I was like, okay, I'm going to go in expecting the Raiders defense to be bad but I'm receptive to changing that if they show signs of life with that change at DC with Graham. They have not. Uh, They currently rank, if I combine my priors uh, with the data we have from 2022, they rank 28th against the pass. That's pretty rough facing against an offense that is just, I mean, even with the changeover they've had offensively, they're still lighting the world on fire. And they had that blip against the Colts, which was very, very frustrating to watch, but I think we can have a lot of faith in this Chiefs offense. So my numbers actually do show value in the spread here. It's 8.5. My numbers have it versus 7.5 in the market right now. I have not bet that because of the funky way that key numbers break down. I kind of want a bit more of 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 an edge there with it being at 7.5 right now. The Vikings kind of taught me a good lesson in that yesterday. You know, the the push, but like whatever. Um, (laughs) It's important to have more cushion for me when it's around that area. So sure. I have not bet the spread right now. I do show value in the chief side at uh, minus eight, uh, minus seven and a half. But I want to talk to you. You mentioned the total over 50, 51 and a half. Any interest for you in the spread on the chief side or are the Raiders good enough to keep that game close? I mean, in, in Kansas City, I'm, I'm going to be apt to, to bet the Chiefs. I mean, I, I really just feel like, you know, with the Raiders and the Raiders have had some weird games thus far this season, too. I mean, the record kind of doesn't, you know, dictate the season for them, unfortunately. So I feel like this would be a little bit different. But I mean, even with even with the hook there past the magic number of seven, I'm still willing to go on the Chiefs just because of their margin of victory versus this team in historic fashion and them being at home um, a lot going in the Chiefs favor here, I think to get right and just really blow the doors off. So yeah, I'm I'm happy to get that seven and a half number. I think that makes a lot of sense. So let's talk about the most intriguing aspect of this game. I think at least for me, maybe this is my like DFS brain coming out, but I like the backfields here. I think they're very interesting because Clyde Edwards, Elair's role has been, a talking point this year because it's been odd. He's had a lot of touchdowns, but not a ton of usage Did get a bit better this past week from a snap rate perspective. And we've seen Josh Jacobs role expand the past few weeks. He's kind of become like a legitimate featured back in this offense. So when you're looking at the rushing props here, anything standing out to you? Yeah, not, not so much on the, on the Elara side. And it's, it's just for me, I can never, I, I just, never feel like I get him right anytime that I'm like oh man he's been doing well you know this is a this is a great play this is a good matchup and and you know I think that people will look at it and say okay the Chiefs get up big this should be all Edwards Elair work that that comes through fruition and they right. can get him going and they've just had a propensity to get other guys involved we had seen this back when Daryl Williams was there in the fold, when Damian Williams was there in the fold, that they kind of just love to mix these guys in. And we know that Mahomes is not going to stop passing. I mean, and, and it, the same thing with Josh Allen. Like it was a people thought Devin Singletary, I included, were like, man, this would be a great game to kind of get Devin Singletary going if it's a 14 point spread and they get out of, you know, they get it out of hand and then. Josh Allen just takes 30 points himself and they bring in James Cook. This could be an Isaiah Pacheco game. 
I really feel like he could get involved a little bit more so. And, you know, maybe they feel like they don't need to put Edwards Alaire in a situation where he's going to get hurt if they're if they're, you know, taking this game handedly. He, he does have some interesting. I think it's interesting to bet him in the touchdown prop market because he had he has had some success against this Raiders defense when it comes to scoring and not necessarily rushing. I also do like his receiving yardage prop of 18 and a half for Clyde Edwards Alaire. So that's what I'm looking like. That's what I'm looking for on the KC side. Now, when we talk about the the Raiders side of things with Josh Jacobs, this guy has to be involved. I mean, th- th- we've been beating the drum for the Raiders to get Josh Jacobs involved, to get him 20 touches a game I, I, till the cows come home the past couple seasons, and they refuse to do it. And you love that last week he saw 28 carries and is getting targeted in the backfield. He's had 11 targets over the past two games. He's 18 and a half. For his receiving prop, I think that's very interesting. I think if you want to bet him rushing and receiving, if they can somehow, you know, keep this game close, neutral, don't let it get out of hand, they're going to get him involved and get him the ball. He's the only way that they can, you know, get things going. And he's actually had some success when it comes to, you know, scoring twice against the Kansas City Chiefs or scoring into the red zone. Um, So he also has some interesting uh, merit in the touchdown market prop. But, you know, from an overall standpoint, Jim, I really think I got to look at the passing attack for both of these sides. So you mentioned one of the key things that I might, I have two bets in this backfield. One of them you mentioned, that's the Josh Jacobs receiving number, 18 and a half yards. Uh, It's minus 106 at FanDuel Sportsbook. You alluded to the 11 targets the past two weeks. My only trepidation, I did bet this before I thought about this. So I'm talking you through my thought process. So maybe okay. you can get more thought before doing this. Um, my only trepidation with that is that Hunter Renfro missed both those games. And now Hunter yeah. Renfro will be back for this one. And they kind of operate in a similar part of the field. The reason yeah. I still feel okay that I bet that in retrospect, this could just be like copium on my part, but um <laughs> Jacobs had 16 receiving yards week one with Renfro there. He had 12 in week two with Renfro there. And he's kind of moved beyond Brandon Bolden, Amir Abdullah, Zamir White from a pass catching perspective. So even if we reinsert Hunter Renfro in that lineup, I still think Jacobs can get there over 18 and a half. Uh, It's not like Matt Collins is getting no targets. My guess is that the guy who gets burned the most by Renfro coming back is Mac Hollins, which allows Jacobs to still get a decent amount of work. So I do like Jacobs over 18 and a half receiving yards specifically. The other one I like over at FanDuel, I didn't expect to see this prop up because I thought this guy was pretty dusty and it was pretty evident this past week. Clyde Edwards, or sorry, uh, Jarek McKinnon. Jarek McKinnon's rushing plus receiving yardage prop is 25 and a half. He barely played last week. Wow. He kind of got squeezed with more Pacheco rotating in uh, with more Edwards. Elair, he got some more snaps as well. McKinnon had played 39% of the snaps in each game. The first three games that dropped down to 22% this past week. And a lot of times when he was playing, it was inside the red zone, not getting a lot of yardage there. He could score, but he's not going to get a lot of yardage. So, the receiving uh, plus rushing prop is 25 and a half. He has hit that once so far this year. He had a 0.0 yards last week. So I want the under there uh, just based on kind of what you said. Pacheco did get more involved last week, and it wasn't just when that game was out of hand. So you could say, hey, McKinnon is more the pass catching guy if they fall down. Um, you know, last week they were up big against Tampa Bay. That's why he was squeezed out. Well, OK, there's seven and a half point favorites here. My numbers say it should be eight and a half. So McKinnon under 25 and a half rushing plus receiving. That is my preferred one over the Jacobs pass catching one. But I think both those very, very okay. And ones I feel comfortable doing. So to me, I think my favorite bet of the entire game, honestly, is McKinnon under 25 and a half rushing plus receiving yards over there. You mentioned the pass catchers, though. So let's talk about those pass catchers here and talk about the return of Hunter Renfro here. He is back. Juju Smith-Schuster, though, uh, he might be a bit banged up. He got in a limited practice on Saturday. Sounds like he'll be okay, but potentially not at 100%. So any value for you in the pass catching props for this week? Yeah, I mean, it's it's going to start with Kelsey for me. I mean, Kelsey has has really, you know, exploited this team in the past, I believe, his his receptions prop on the FanDuel Sportsbook right now is over six and a half at minus 120. Um, that feels kind of juiced up. But when you look at what he's done against the Raiders, you know, I mean, it, 
last I think the last game was maybe five or seven receptions but he's really been around that number and has had a couple eights mixed in there so I mean this could be similar to the Cooper Cup thing you're talking about Juju being injured um MVS really hasn't had a chance to get going yet um you know there could be running free lanes they might not have to dump it off to the backs as much um and and so I really like like Kelsey there I also like the Kelsey um, you know, it's hard to bet on the anytime touchdown. He's the favorite in the market, and that makes sense. He has not scored a touchdown at, at home this year. Actually, they've all been on the road. They've only played one home game. This is their second one this season. I think it's interesting and, and has some merit to bet Kelsey two touchdowns, which, again, is the favorite in the market. But if you're going to bet him, you know, at minus 130 or whatever it is on the FanDuel Sportsbook, why not take the over four to one odds for him to score twice? Because we know that, you know, when Kelsey goes off, it comes in bunches. So um, he's actually done that a couple times against this team. So I do like him. Um, if I was taking a wide receiver on the – on the Chiefs on their total, I, I would look at MVS to go 40 and a half there just because he has that big play ability. He's getting the deep targets um, as far as an dot perspective on this team. So I do like that. And then the, the return of Hunter Renfro, I think is interesting. I mean, his yardage prop is kind of a tough one to swallow, but if you can, you know, 43 and a half is where it's at. If you can get behind the receptions, if you do think that, you know, um, that Josh Jacobs is going to suffer. He's at four and a half right now. And I mean, he he's been all over the field and he's been another catalyst that they've had to use against this team just because of in the past, how this, how the defense has played, how the safeties has played um, under, under their coordinator. I think that, you know, he, he has some merit to get over the field. Um, so it's, it's tough. Cause I do like, I do like the Raiders side of things from the passing perspective. I mean, even, you know, you're looking at Darren Waller uh, with his 240 anytime touchdown, I think is, is very interesting as well. Um, I'm, I can't, I don't know what to expect from Devontae Adams in this game. And that's, what's yeah. really driving <laughs> a wrench in everything for me on their side. Like I, you know, I know that in the past we could just trust, Aaron Rodgers to kind of feed Devontae Adams in, in any type of situation where he needed him. And I think that there's so I hate using the so many mouths to feed because, you know, all these teams have great players and they have so yeah. many mouths. But it, it does feel like on the Raiders that Derek Carr just cannot, you know, he's not going to hone in on them. You know, if, if there's trouble, he's got Jacobs, Renfro, Waller, uh, you know, Mac Hollins, all these other guys in Adams just kind of helps open things up for all of them. Are you reading into anything for, for Adams in your models? He's volatile. Like that's just, that's kind of what it is where he, he, I think he still has the same ceiling that he had previously, but like his meeting expectation is lower. The floor is lower. And that's kind of where I'm at is just, there's a lot of volatility there and that can be good and bad. If you can still at the high end of, of your range of outcomes. But when you're betting like, receiving yardage props it's not really the the ceiling you care about it's it's the median and the median's been lowered um as a result of the way they've been playing things the range of outcomes discussion is also pertinent for marquez valdez scanley you mentioned him as being a guy 40 and a half i think that that's like an intriguing number problem is he's yeah. also like Devonte, where he's volatile right now and he's right. always volatile but like i think that you could take the stance of okay juju's a little bit banged up um, you know, where Devonte Adams workload is weird. Kelsey's obviously very good, but there is at least a path to Marquez Valdez scaling, having a big game. Now, typically that would lead you to the alternate receiving yardage market. That's not up. Uh, he's not a big enough name to get a, to get place in alt market on, at least not a fan duel. Some other books have checked out as well. Uh, there's no alternate market there. However, you could, and I've not done this, but just, you know, you could check out maybe Marquez Valdez scaling to lead the game in receiving yards. He's 12 to one to do that. And mm. with the way, with the kinds of targets he gets with, uh, with uh, Juju being a bit banged up. I don't think that's totally outlandish. Uh, Devonte Adams plus plus one sixty, Travis Kelsey plus two forty, twelve 12 to one for MVS. Given the way he can operate, uh, he's now healthier than he was because he had that abdominal injury entering this past week. I don't mind that. So I think, I'm on board with you with the thought process of maybe looking his way. I think I just want to get a bit more upside if I'm doing so, potentially via that route. Is that a bridge too far for you on MVS? 
No, I mean, we, we've kind of seen it before. You know, it's funny that we're talking about Adams in MVS, uh, former Aaron Rodgers targets here yeah. <laughs> uh, in this game. But, yeah, I mean, if he can connect, and there have been some opportunities. I haven't watched all the Chiefs games, but from the ones that I can remember, he has gotten some chances on deep shots that have just not come to fruition, whether Mahomes has missed them or he couldn't grab the catch or what have you. And that was, that was kind of trouble with him. Uh, when he was on the Packers as well, too, of letting some letting some things go. But this is a guy, I mean, he can take the top off of a defense. He's not a Tyreek Hill. I mean, he's yeah. not. And they brought him in to kind of somewhat replace what they were going to be missing in that standpoint. But he, he does offer some upside there. I mean, if he can get behind the defense and bring down the catch, you're looking at this guy, you know, taking off for a 40, 50, 60 yard um, catch anytime he's on the field. So I do think there is some merit there to, for him to be explosive. Um, and, ha you know, have like a three catch 125 yard game or something like that, um, which could come to fruition at 12 to one. I'd be willing to take a shot on that. If he could just give me a Gabe Davis, a 98 yarder to start things off and hey. I could be happy the rest of the game. Like, you know, I'm not going to complain. Let's uh, oh try goodness. to manifest that uh, yep. as we do with Gabe this past week. You mentioned Darren Wallers anytime touchdown. He is plus 240 uh, to score at FanDuel right now. Is that your favorite touchdown prop or are there others you're in on for tonight? Uh, yeah. He's not my favorite. I, I think there is some merit there. I mean, Isaiah Pacheco at, at 210, um, even though it's a lot more, you know, he what is he, the seventh highest or sixth highest yeah. um, touchdown score there. So that, you know, it kind of feels gross. Um, but I do think that there is some merit there with how he's been involved to, you know, get some, get some usage in there. Uh, I, I mean, I think for me, really, it's going to be, you know, the, these such on markets are, are are tough this week because I feel like there's so many different routes where I could go and the favorite, yeah. you know, like normally plus money on Devontae Adams, I'd be willing to take that all 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 day. But with Hunter Renfro coming back and mm -hmm. you just not knowing, I do think that if I had to bet on a rate on a Raiders side, my favorite one would be Josh Jacobs at 125. Okay. Um, just because I do feel like they will try and, you know, kind of use him on the goal line uh, in the red zone, just kind of get him going there. They don't want to have Carr make a mistake. Um, so I think that Josh Jacobs can be seeing a lot of work there in the red zone, in the green zone for his touches. I, I am probably going to probably have a full unit on Kelsey scoring twice just because I just feel like this is, you know, this is one of those games where I feel like they just try and get him going, you know, in front of the home crowd um struggled you know kind of struggled last week so i just i just feel like a kelsey game coming and especially if i'm looking at the chiefs putting up you know four touchdowns plus i'm i'm happy to get in on that number for him even though he is the favorite of the market um in the two touchdown market prop i'm still i'm still leaning that way yeah, I think that's uh, that's a fun one for sure. Going back to Pacheco, you mentioned that uh, it seems like they've been using him more in the red zone. That's true. Um, that is a, a factual assertion. So last week overall, his snap rate was 22%. Very good number. Because uh, he was at 24% week one, but that was a blowout. Um, so I'm, I don't care about that one. 22% last week, but that number rose to 33% inside the red zone. Uh, he played uh, six out of 18 snaps there. Same number as Clyde edwards Elair, Same number as Jarek McKinnon. Again, McKinnon played more. He played like a wildcat quarterback snap uh, in the, the red zone this past week. If you look at uh, from 12 yards and in, Pacheco's snap rate there was 4 at 11, so 36%. Kept on expanding there. Uh, not a ton of sample inside like near the goal line, but I think that you're you might be right in the way you're reading that in the terms that they might want to get him more involved. We saw this like it was a couple years ago. The Bills would always get Isaiah McKenzie involved inside the red zone because he was like this this fast dude. And they're like, OK, you're not you're like you are locked on the sidelines. If we are between the 20s, you will not touch the field. <laughs> But once we're in the red zone, you are allowed to leave the white chalk on the sidelines. You can go in the game as a little treat. I don't know if this is quite a Pacheco thing there, but it does seem as though they're more willing to use and try to get that juice when things are more concentrated. So I think that there could be some merit to that thought. Um, again, snap rate increase inside the red zone this past week. He had three out of 16 red zone chances, which is not a big number, but um, the snap rate was good down there. So I think that that is at least uh, a viable thought process uh, for Pacheco. But the Kelsey one is fun. Uh, six to one for two touchdowns at FanDuel Sportsbook. Any other props you like for tonight at FanDuel Sportsbook here, Ryan? 
Yeah, we got a we got a couple. I mean, I talked about the the total um, at nauseum, and I think that I, I'm going to hit that five games in a row have hit over this number of 51 and a half. So let's go all in on that. If I'm going all in on that number, let's take the Chiefs uh, team total points of oh, yeah. 31 and a half. Minus 106 on the FanDuel Sportsbook is where it comes in at now. Uh, the Chiefs in, in the Patrick Mahomes era have not scored less than 28 points against this Raiders team. Uh, all they need is, you know, four more points to come to fruition. Now, it is the, the one thing that is interesting about the, the team total and the total in general is, uh, you know, Daniel Carlson on the other side, which he, I looked at his kicker prop. He's over six, over six and a half points for him is juiced at minus 130 because this guy has nailed field goals against this team they can't sustain drives they're putting up six points nine points three points um they, they're always getting Daniel Carlson involved the the Chiefs on the other hand they don't have Harrison Bucker for this game they are going to have you know the backup kicker um so that becomes interesting when you're looking at the team totals and sides of things but I think they score enough touchdowns um to really get to that number um Patrick Mahomes over two and a half touchdowns plus one thirty-two. I, I pretty much always tell you that anytime Patrick Mahomes has an over touchdown prop and it's plus money, uh, I'm going to be willing to take it. So I got to I got to take that number there with Patrick Mahomes. And then lastly, Derek Carr is minus one hundred two to throw an interception against this team. This guy has thrown an interception in seven straight games, I believe, against the Chiefs, and some have been multiple. Uh, some games have been multiple interceptions. So I at one hundred two, pretty much almost plus money. I'm willing to put a unit on that as well um, with Derek Carr, you know, having the propensity to have to throw. And then through that, they could just scheme up ways to, you know, make it tough for him and make him make an easy mistake. So I'll take that all day as well. I think the kicking point is actually a pretty good thing to bring up too, as a result, as it pertains to key numbers, because the total for this game, 51 and a half, that's right around a key number 51. Right. Uh, the t- team total for the chiefs, 31 and a half. That's right, right around a, 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 a key number of 31. And key numbers still matter if your kicker is banged up but there is i don't know it's it's a bit of a weirder distribution when they may be more inclined to go for two they may be more inclined right. to keep the offense out there on fourth down stuff like that so it's an important thing to, to keep in mind because key numbers matter a lot and i think in that specific situation it could be a bit different as well because of the kicking situation for kansas city right now uh hopefully bucker gets back soon because it's uh, <laughs> it's you know, more chaos in Chiefs games, not typically a thing that we necessarily need. Oh, yeah. That's all we got here for this Monday night football game between the Raiders and the Chiefs. It should be a pretty fun one. We'll see how things play out. We'll see if we can get that Kelsey two touchdown prop over at FanDuel Sportsbook at six to one. Again, don't forget to subscribe to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcast back once again tomorrow. To talk about some and they'll be playoff pitching props with pitching Ooh. ninja we'll also uh, go through my first look at week number six and get uh my thoughts on those games there what my numbers are seeing in those games ryan congratulations again on the move good luck to you Thank with you the sir. unpacking and good luck to you with your bets for tonight yeah we'll 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 make sure that the bets get in before any more unpacking gets done <laughs> uh but uh but no it's it's gonna be a fun ride happy to be able to just enjoy this time uh sit on the couch hopefully get a good game ahead of us and uh, raking the money. So good luck to everybody out there. That is the goal. Absolutely. Check out Ryan on Twitter at Ryan Alexander underscore W. I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. Enjoy the games, everybody. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow for some MLB and NFL. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 